Hello, hello everyone! Today I'm going to be featuring the new Strashimi. A very modern looking, well, because it is pretty damn modern compared to most of the World War II stuff. A very modern looking destroyer. Now, before I start, I want to highlight that we broke past 99,300 followers, which means we are less than 700 followers away from that magical 100,000 and from that insane 100,000 followers giveaway. So thank you very much for the guys who've taken the time to drop a follow on Twitch. I really, really do appreciate it because we are getting so very, very close to making that giveaway happen. Moving on. The new Strashimi. Well, it's a DD with a gimmick. Uh, like most of the, it's a steel destroyer which means you can you can only buy it with steel as of now but uh, as far as I understood it's one of the ships that are being moved away and will be available much later for another resource however the new Shashimi has a gimmick like most of these steel ships uh, the Borgonia has the reload booster on a battleship and you got Stalingrad with those ridiculous guns and tankiness and then you got black with the radar and you got New Strashimi, and New Strashimi's gimmick, New Strashimi's gimmick is the heal. It has a very unique heal, it has, you can get three charges of it, and if you build fully for the heal, which means of course you run survivability expert, as you should on a DD, and you slot the flag that increases your healing potential, each heal can heal for a potential 8500 health. Well, 8514, but 8.5k a pop is basically the healing you can get. So, the survivability and the amount of baiting and just honestly kind of reckless play you can pull off in this ship is pretty insane at times. You know, like in this case, I'm pushing into a Fletcher uh, while a carrier is throwing rocket planes at me and there's a whole lot of things going on. I probably expect torpedoes as well. And this kind of, kind of insane aggression that you can pull off isn't really possible in many other ships, but in the Neo Strashimi, thanks to that heal, you can kind of play insane when you feel like it. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. And you can see just the sheer amount of healing that I'm recovering, even though I am burning and being shot at and dodging torpedoes. And this aggression allows me to secure a first kill on the Fletcher, with the torpedoes though. And now of course got to angle away in case the Chapa pops a radar, which surprisingly he hasn't popped yet. Which is honestly quite surprising because he was within radar range, but then disengaged. Moving on! That doesn't mean that, well, wow, it has a, it's a DD with a super heal. It's really, really overpowered or it's really insane. No, it's honestly, in my opinion, it's kind of the, op the opposite. The concealment on the ship is good. As you can see, 5.6 km is very, very good for this full stealth build. Considering it's got 20.5k health when you run the HP perk, as I do, you get 23.650, which is a pretty respect respectable health pull. The speed isn't too bad either, because you do have access to speed boost, which means you can break over 40 knots. You can do, I think, almost 41 knots in it. The rudder shift is a bit eh at 4.6, but honestly, it's not really that bad. The turning circle is 700 meters. That is pretty clumsy when you consider the American DDs do 560 and the uh, Pan-Europeans are about 600-ish. Uh, only really the really clumsy Soviets do over 700 and this thing sits at exactly 700. So in terms of agility, it is pretty clumsy. Plane spotting is three kilometers base, and as you can see, the normal concealment I already mentioned. So these values are, aren't really that, in fact, they're pretty good. Some of them are really good. Concealment is good, the health pool is good, the speed is perfectly decent, maneuverability is eh. But then we start getting into the real issue, and that is the damage output. You saw it wasn't really doing too much damage to that Fletcher. That's because, well, the gun dispersion can be quite wonky. Especially because you only have four guns. You got two two turrets, uh, well, two two gun turrets. And <laughs> the damage output of these guns is very pitiful indeed. You, do, you have 108k base DPM. 108k. If you fully build for it, you can get it up to 136 HE DPM. And, but 136 HE DPM isn't that impressive when you consider that Fletcher does over, Fletcher does over 200. 
Tashkent does 170. Even the Benham, which is absolutely not considered a gunboat, uh, can does 131k base compared to your 108k base. So the Benham has 30%, almost 30% more DPM than you do. And the Benham is basically as one of the best torpedo boats in the game. So that gives you an impression of just how completely underwhelming the gun power on this ship is. I'm a bit baffled by the fact that my um, shores, while popping Hydra, ate torpedoes. The reason, of course, why I popped the AA and popped defensive AA there was because I was within the German DD Hydra range, so there was no way to stay undetected, so I might as well turn on the AA and try to shoot down the planes before I get killed. Moving on! The APDPM is just as underwhelming. <laughs> In fact, at least with APDPM, you do beat the Benham. But I mean, the penetration charts aren't exactly going to win any prizes for the Nostra Uh If you get very close, you can do something. Uh, it oh, it's actually has better penetration than things like Tashkent and um, I think Udaloy. But obviously nowhere near Mogador, so the AP penetration is decent. If you get very, very close, you can get some citadels, but we're talking point blank ranges like 5 to 6 kilometers. But um, you can arm it, you can pen upper belts and such, so you can use AP on broadsides. But the DPM is, as I mentioned, not that special. So obviously, what you have to rely on is your torpedoes. Now what you have been seeing me send out quite often here. The torpedo DPM is quite decent, it's 86k, um, this is actually better than Jutland's 78k. Your Alpha Strike is good at 179k, you launch 10 torpedoes with uh, 10km range, they do 65 knots and they hit for I think 17 points something, it's about 18k a pop per torpedo. The reload time is fairly long but these torpedoes have a 1.3km concealment and with the new module, the torpedo acceleration module, you can get them up to, I think, 68 knots. So you got, they, uh, they are only 10 km, but, uh, but they are quite stealthy and they do hit quite hard. So in general, the torpedoes are absolutely usable. They provide a lot of utility and you can hit, you can easily nail DDs, cruisers and such, thanks to the speed and concealment. The DPM, as I mentioned, though, not that special. Um, Benham, well, Benham almost doubles it, of course, but of who would be a good comparison in terms of torpedo damage. Uh, perhaps the Fletcher. The Fletcher does 108k torpedo DPM compared to your 86k. So your torpedo damage isn't gonna win any prizes. Oh man, just looking at this HE DPM is depressing. The reload is so slow and the damage is so sad and the fire chance isn't really that special either. It's just gunning down things in the Neustrishimi is usually a fairly long process. You shouldn't expect it to happen anytime soon. AA-wise, uh, not really that special. I mean, no one really has, but don't expect anything like a Friesland. You, you got maybe a third of Friesland's AA. Uh, you're a bit, but you're better than the likes of Jutland. You're about around the, the Fletcher Black tier in terms of AA. So, a tier eight carrier, you can kind of somewhat okayishly deal with the planes. But if a tier ten carrier wants to kill you, there is nothing you can do. I'm pinging the B-cap, I'm trying to get my Bismarck, uh, the B-cap is a bit unique in the sense that the B-cap can be capped from the south side. If the Bismarck goes into the cap and stops, he can cap it from complete cover and they can't reset him. Because I can't afford to go there right now because, well, we got a full-on battleship push coming down into our spawn. And if I abandon this flank, they're going to crossfire my entire team. So my job here is to stop this push in its tracks and hopefully my team can cap it. Somewhat insanely, I want to highlight my Bismarck. In case you noticed, didn't notice my Bismarck on the one line. He has sailed the, down the J line and now he's going up the one line. And he's a bit of a special character in this story of this game because, <laughs> well, he's going to continue his somewhat interesting um, direction. The Alaska has also decided that he's better served going into their spawn hunting the Lexington. So we got our team, my team is basically making this game very, very difficult for me. My torpedoes take down the Gneiser now. With a flooding, it gives me a devastating, and now I'm gonna focus on the bloody Vostok. These are the two flanking BBs that I went out here to cap. Moving on though. So ultimately, uh, torpedo DPM on this thing is really the only saving grace. It's decent. It's not anything special. It's not gonna win any awards. 
But, I mean, it loses Chug Mu, it loses quite significantly to Fletcher, but it's okay. And if you build for it, as I have done here, basically you just build full on torpedo build, you use the concealment and you use the usable torpedoes, and then you just try to vomit out torpedoes whenever you can. I have found that it is quite effective. But the ship is huge. That's something that I should highlight here. In terms of size, you might not maybe have gotten a good... Well, you should only... Just looking at the ship, you should, you should see just... It's a modern-looking huge ship. So I don't really understand how it has such good concealment, but it does help give it an edge. So, torpedo DPM is okay. Gun DPM is dreadful. Gun dispersion is pretty eh. In ter just gun power is just trash in general. Um, but it does have the gimmick heal, and it does have a lot of consumables. The smokes are okay-ish. Standard, fairly standard Soviet smokes, nothing special there. My torpedoes catch the bloody Vostok, and that is this flank dealt with. My Bismarck, sadly, instead of hiding behind that island to camp, decided to push out and gunfight them. And obviously he got gunned down. And my Alaskan, Alaskan Bismarck are still convinced that uh, they are best serving the team by sailing into the enemy spawn to hunt the carrier. So obviously at this point, I my only choice is to finally go and get this objective because clearly no one else is intending to. And the flanking Mayoko isn't really a big problem, whereas the flanking battleships could have caused crossfires. The flanking Mayoko can't do that much. So I'm just going to go and try to secure a second camp. We're still down a ship and we're still down a camp and we're down a fair few points. But the game is not over yet. A bit of an issue here is the Neptune is actually pushing towards me and I do need to get rid of the Neptune and the Akatsuki and the Rune if I want to secure this objective so I got a bit of an uphill battle to climb here. The carrier however spots the DD and he's fairly far away. I'm just waiting to line up to see what the Neptune is doing. If he's is going to turn behind the island, no he's actually pushing towards me. I drop the torps, I pop the speed boost and I wait. I want my torpedoes to close the distance. More importantly, you see that he popped his heal. He actually used a very early heal that didn't heal much. But I know by the fact that if I open up on him now, his heal will, will not be available. So I might actually be able to get a kill on him. I shoot to distract him to make him turn towards me. So he gives broadside to the torps. He turns towards me uh, to shoot me. And in the process, he actually eats a torpedo and a second one. So that takes him down and that gives me my Kraken. The Akatsuki figures uh, for, for this was an opportunity to open up on me, so he started gunfighting me. Carrier goes in for a rocket strike while I am shooting him and he gets taken down as well. Suddenly, we are down to 3 versus 4. Or 4 versus 3, in our favor that is. Rune is reversing out. I shoot some HE, but I do switch to AP here because as I mentioned, the AP is decent. But, uh, as I mentioned, also the dispersion is... I mean, look at that dispersion. It doesn't look like DD dispersion, it just... Sometimes it can be so very trolly and so very all over the place, basically. It, it, it's weird. The, the dispersion is just weird, especially when fighting other DDs. So, <laughs> do I think it's overpowered because it has access to a super heal and these things? Um, honestly, no, not really. The only thing really strong about the Nestrashimi is that it can be hard to kill but in terms of pure fighting power the Jutland is a much stronger DD because of the fast stack it has a heal it has hydro it has fast acting smokes it got insane DPM Kitakaze the same thing just huge torpedo and more importantly gun power and just insane firepower insane concealment like the tier 9 DD lineup is so stacked you got the insane gunboat Kitakaze, you got the insane hybrid Jutland, you got the incredible torpedo boat Benham, then you got the gimmicky black with the radar, which is a nightmare for any sort of one versus one DD fights. Like, you got so many, and then you got the Mogador with the French beast. I, I, in fact, I got an insane highlight I, I'm gonna upload of the Mogador, where I basically, I do a challenge where I refuse to stop and I just sail around full speed in the Mogador all game. I travel something like 90 kilometers in the match and I just carry my team while doing it. The, the, the DD lineup at tier 9 is so incredibly stacked that trying to justify spending your steel on the Neus Chishimi, whose only really gimmick is that if you get to disengage, that means if you're not radar and killed off, or like hunted down by the carrier, or eaten unlike a torpedo, if you get a chance to use all your heals, 
you're pretty hard to take down. And I, I played a fair bit of Neo Strashima actually. In fact, I've been playing on my press account, the one I'm play playing right now, the wows underscore cc underscore 57. I've been playing on this enough that I have over 40 games. I got 42 games on Russia and I, I checked the wows number stats and I'm actually the second place best uh, Neo Strashimi player on the entire server. And even I don't think there is any reason to spend steel on this ship. So take it from me. There are so many better things you can spend steel on than this ship. The gimmick is amusing, but it's not amusing enough to justify wasting all that steel just to get to experience it. Absolutely not worth it. Note that my Alaska got killed in their spawn, and my Bismarck who sailed on the J-line and then sailed up the one line and is now sailing on the A-line. He's literally circling the edge of the entire map. He is finally now starting to catch up to the Lexington, just in time for us to also catch up to him. He has not provided a whole lot of use. I do see my name being, or the new Strashimi being mentioned in chat a couple of times with a plus sign. I, as far as I understood on Russia, this means that they're like giving me karma. When this game ended, I got a fair few compliments, so I think it's like they're complimenting me. Um, the guys who speak Russian can probably translate and figure it out. I entered the cap, so I know the planes are going to come around and try to reset me. So I use my smoke here, use my defensive AA and sector reinforcement. I try to keep moving, but he still gets a strike in on me and resets me briefly. But at this point, it doesn't matter. I use my second super heal. Note that sometimes you don't even really get to use the super heals. That's obviously another issue with having heal as a gimmick. If you have insane torpedo power as a gimmick, you probably get to use it every game. If you have insane firepower as a gimmick, you probably get to use that every game, every time you smoke up. Like, look at Kitakaze, you utilize, you smoke up, you shoot. It's very easy to utilize the gimmick. But the way to use Neo Strashimi's gimmick is to literally take damage. That's how, ne that's how you make use of this gimmick. You sail out there and you take these insane fights, like the early fight I took against the Fletcher. You take these crazy, crazy risks and you put yourself in these vulnerable positions. And that's how you make use of Neo Strashimi's special gimmick. Uh, and obviously that's not a very good gimmick to have, or like a very useful gimmick to have. It, it, it's fairly hard to execute, or not, it's not hard to execute, being shot at it is easy, but it's hard to get maximum benefits from it. After kill, getting six kills, I also managed to get every single solo cap. In fact, I kept A solo, I kept B solo, and now I kept C solo. So I killed half the team and I got all three caps. And it actually looks crazily enough that we might, it looks like we might actually win this game after what felt like a, quite a uphill mountain to climb. The Lexington surprisingly is reversing towards the Bismarck, so it looks like our Bismarck, who has sailed all the way through their spawn, is finally gonna get to shoot the guy he has been chasing for the last 18 minutes. And he gets to shoot him at the point of the game where it actually doesn't matter anymore. That's a pretty good lesson to learn, guys. Don't go hunting the carrier all game. J just don't do it. I mean, it's, it's such a waste of resources. And that guy could have, like, the Alaska and Bismarck just helping us at B could have made this game so much easier. But instead they chose to hunt the carrier all match. Defensive AA plus reinforced sector. As you can see, the carrier missed his strike and he still got, uh, was able to come in for a second strike. So that's against the tier 8 rocket planes. Against tier 10 rocket planes it's obviously going to be even harsher and you're going to struggle even harder. Game ends, 144,000 damage. Pretty okay. More, more amusingly, three devastating strikes, first blunt and a kraken. Eleven torpedo hits, six planes shot down, six kills, and three captured objectives. Only one fire. Don't expect many fires in this thing because, well, with these guns, it's not easy to be a, what, what could be called an excellent fire starter. Team score wise, 2,700, two which is of course quite good. I did give a compliment to the carrier because the carrier was one of the few ships that actually actively helped me in trying to win this game and I was glad to see him rewarded. The rest of the team seemed to be going out of the, their way to make this game as difficult as possible to win. Detailed report wise, 
well torpedoes obviously the majority of the damage 115,000 with a couple of floodings on top uh, actual gun damage about 22k in total not really that special damage received though is of course pretty amusing with 25,000 and that number can be a lot higher if you manage to make that gimmick work but obviously in order to make Neustrashimi's gimmick work you have to take a ton of damage which makes it a very questionable gimmick indeed let me show you guys my recommended build for this ship right starting off we have the consumables I would say premium damage con, uh, premium smoke and premium heal followed by speed boost and defensive AA in that order you should run them premium uh, the reasoning for defensive AA coming last is of course that it's the least useful one since wargaming has gone out of their way to make defensive AA pretty trash indeed upgrade wise turret and torpedo survival you only have two turrets you need them alive improved speed boost if you don't have this run the engine room protection but if you do, can run this 50 percent extra speed boost is of course very useful third upgrade the new torpedo tubes mod one on any ship that focuses on torpedoes this thing is absolutely top tier and worth slotting Faster acceleration, because, well, for obvious reasons, you don't really need the maneuverability. 4.6 is okay. It's not good, but it's okay. Concealment. And finally, Torp Tube Reload, because as I mentioned, we are going to build this ship around the torpedoes. Captain build-wise, priority target, followed by last stand followed by survivability expert, followed by concealment expert. This is usually the start of the average DD build. And then when we build torpedoes, it's very common that I go for torpedo reload, adrenaline rush. But at this point on most other DDs, I would build for RPF. But because this ship has so many consumables, I go for superintendent at this point. Because you got your smokes, you got your defensive AA, you got your speed boost, you got your super powered heal. You, you have so much value out of superintendent and thanks to your 5.6 hand concealment and thanks to your super heal, being rushed by other DDs isn't really that big of a deal. You can take the fight, you can disengage and you can heal up. So this is a, this is a DD that manages without superintendent or without uh, RPF very well indeed. And of course, this means that you can slot preventive maintenance, which, because you only have two turrets, is very, very valuable. Flag-wise, super heal. Uh, I sh you should run the speed boost. I'm surprised I wasn't running it. I must have forgotten to slot it. Slot it. Gives you a nice little bump. And you should run November Foxtrot. Uh, wow, I, I was making life very hard for myself, not, not having the faster consumables either. So I would say heal, speed, faster consumables, detonation flags. Those fours, four are must-have, and then fire chance is a nice bonus, but don't ex expect much. The AA boost is a nice bonus, but don't expect too much here either. Overall, though, I personally do not think the Neustrashimi is worth the steel cost. I think the gimmick is very debatable indeed. It will apparently be moved. Um, into what was it the armory or research bureau or whatever they were moving it for but that's gonna take like half a year and my recommendation is save your steel wait those six months if you want to experience the gimmick honestly when you can get so many incredible steel ships spending in the steel on Neososhimi is <laughs> probably the worst choice you can make I will be featuring some other steel ships for example the black um, soon because that's another ship that has been requested and people ask do you think it's worth it overall though thank you guys for tuning in thank you for watching if you can be bothered please drop me a follow on twitch i would love to hit that 100k goal and of course if you enjoy my video content on youtube please drop a subscription as well because honestly that's one of the best ways to figure out if people like my content seeing that people are subscribing anyways i'll talk to you guys next time thank you for watching